Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about the hash cache, um, which, you know, un unintroduced doesn't really make any sense, but I run this particular command on stream a lot and people ask about it. So I'm going to explain the full concept today. Um, and no, it has nothing to do with 420. <laughs> anyway, let's jump into it. Uh, okay, so I'm going to run through some commands and demo a scenario and then talk about what went wrong and how to kind of explain what happened and fix it. So somewhat often, uh, well, I guess to, to start with, uh, I have pre-commit installed on my machine and it is in my home directory's binder. So when I run pre-commit dash dash version, that resolves fine. And you know, if we say which pre-commit, it will point to this directory here. Now, sometimes I want to look at a different version of pre-commit. So what I will do is I will install, or I will set up a virtual env and I will activate that virtual env. And what that does is it puts virtual env on the path uh, I'm not going to go into details about path here, but I did do another video on path, so I will link that in the description. Uh, but I might want to install, you know, pre-commit equals 2.5.0 instead of 2.6.0. I don't know why I would want to install an older version, but maybe I was looking at a bug or who knows what. Uh, but now when we say pre-commit version, it will say that we're running 2.5.0. Now, maybe I've figured out what I need to figure out or, or whatever and I'm no longer needing pre-commit in this virtual env, so I uninstall it. So maybe I do pip uninstall pre-commit, which is good. And if we say yes, cool, that's all great. And now maybe I want to, again, like, you know, verify that I, you know, uninstalled this and my old pre-commit is now running. So now if I run pre-commit version, it should say 260. Oh, but it doesn't. It gives this weird bash, no file, uh, no such file or directory found. And you'll notice that this path actually points to the exact path that we just uninstalled. Now, what's happening here is bash has a hash cache. <laughs> I don't remember why it's called hash, but that's not super important here. Uh, but what hash does is it re remembers the executables that you run on the command line and stores them in cache. And this prevents path lookups, which can be potentially expensive. Now you can look at all of the things that bash has hash cached by doing hash dash L. Uh, and you'll see here that there are two things that have been cached. One of them is pip and one of them is pre-commit. And in fact, if I say which pre-commit, you'll notice that it's still like which knows that if I look up on the path, I would get my old pre-commit and not this one in my virtual app. Um, but, and, and actually when we ran which, which is actually an executable itself. So you'll notice that it ends up in the hash cache as well. Uh, but Bash is still confused about where pre-commit lives, and so we can tell Bash to forget about the hash cache by doing hash dash r, and you'll see now that uh, there is there is no uh, lookup table here. These have all been forgotten, and if we do pre-commit version now, we will now get you know the proper pre-commit executable. But the uh, the thing that you'll see me run a lot on stream is hash dash r. Uh, where I've like moved an executable or uninstalled something or you know reinstalled something and I want to get to a, a more normal state where I know what all of the executables are doing. But anyway, that is that is the hash cache. Um, the reason that you know you might expect me to have seen uh, I don't know virtual env as part of my hash cache in this part up here, right here. Um, but one thing that virtual env does when you activate or deactivate the virtual env, because it potentially, you know, adds things or removes things from the path, uh, that the hash cache gets reset there. And so, um, you know, we look at hash dash L right now and I, oops, hash dash L, you'll see that we have pre-commit hash, but if I deactivate my virtual env, it should have nothing in the hash cache. Um, and that part of the activation and deactivation of virtual env does that. But anyway, hopefully this explains the hash cache, and thank you all for watching. If you guys have additional stuff you want me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.